What's going on guys? It's Cooper Codes. And in this video, we are going to be using YJS, WebRTC, and React in order to build this really amazing coding interface that a bunch of different clients can use. This uses peer-to-peer -peer networking, which means everyone is connected to each other. And so if I make a change over here, it's going to make a change to everyone's client. This is perfect for any type of collaborative text editing. In this video, I'm going to show off an example that's similar to CoderPad. In order to achieve this functionality, we're going to be using YJS, which allows us to have shared data amongst a bunch of different clients. And then we're going to be using something called a WebRTC, which is allowing us to have peer-to-peer -peer connections that share this YJS object. We're going to cover all that in this video, so let's get started. Let's get started by creating a React application using Vite. So I'm going to say npm create Vite at latest, then the name of our folder, which is going to be app, then a dash dash, another dash dash, and template. And we want to use the React template. So press enter. We will now have our app folder, so we can go into there by saying cd app. For this application, we're going to need to install a couple libraries. So we're going to npm install at monaco-editor slash react for the coding editor we're going to be using. And then yjs, which is that shared editing framework we're going to be using throughout this video. We're going to be using y-monaco, which allows us to attach yjs to the monaco editor. And then y-webrtc, which allows us to use webrtc with yjs. We can then press enter to install these. Let's go on over to our source folder and then go to app.jsx. This is where we're going to be doing the majority of our coding for this tutorial. So this video is going to be two different parts. The first one is set up Monaco editor just by itself and then attach YJS text to Monaco editor. So it's always showing the text of what our YJS represents. So let's set up Monaco. I'm going to delete the app.css here just for easier styling. So I'm going to delete that. Now we can import the editor from at Monaco editor slash react. The Monaco editor is the editor used in VS code and it's very simple to implement. So we can delete everything within our return statement and then we can create an editor like this. The editor is going to take in a couple of different properties. For example, the height is going to be a hundred view height and the width is going to be a hundred view width. This is just so we get a full screen editor like we saw before. I'm also going to make the theme VS code dark because that's the one I like. If we now npm run dev, we'll be able to see this editor in our website. There we go. Here is the editor testing, testing. As you guys can see, the editor is working exactly how we expect. Now what we need to do is make this text value of whatever the editor is showing be a shared state across a bunch of different clients. And I know that kind of sounds complicated and weird, but I will show you guys every single step. And so just to explain that again in a comment here so we can look at it, the editor value is going to point to a YJS text value, which is pretty much just a text value shared by multiple people. And so when one person deletes text, it deletes from the overall shared text value. And all of that is handled by YJS. What we need to do now is first of all, initialize YJS and then tell it to listen to our Monaco instance for changes. From there, it handles everything for us. And so when we initialize YJS, we need the editor to exist. And so we need to say on mount means it's pretty much done loading. We need to call a function we can make called handle editor did mount. Go up here, say function handle editor did mount. And we are getting the editor instance and also Monaco from the editor component. That's where these parameters are coming from. Is there something defined by the Monaco editor? So one thing we need to do with this editor right here is we need to make a reference so we can reference this editor throughout our React application. So we can go up here and get the use ref from React. And we're not going to be using this use state, so we can get rid of that. I'm going to say const editor ref is equal to a use ref of initially null. This keeps a reference to our editor, which is useful because if you're going just beyond this video and you're making different functions that might interact with your editor, for example, you can always get access to this editor right here by using the editor reference. And we can set the editor reference by saying editor ref dot current. So the current value of the reference is equal to the editor that we're getting from the did mount. So within this editor did mount, we're gonna be doing three different things, initialize, 
YJS, connect to peers or start connection if you're the first one with web RTC and then bind YJS to Monaco. And so that's kind of just a fancy way of saying, tell YJS to listen to changes from our Monaco instance. All right, so to do these, we're gonna to need to import some libraries. I'm going to import everything. So use a star as Y from the YJS library. This gives us access to all the functionality we're going to need. Then I'm going to import the web RTC provider. Oh, and that's a lowercase RTC from y-webrtc. And then I'm going to import the Monaco binding from y-monaco. For our current client, we're going to make something called a document from yjs. So we're gonna say const doc is equal to new y-doc. And so this doc is actually technically a collection of shared objects. And so we can eventually define a text object inside of here, which we're going to do in a second. But now we can start the WebRTC connection by saying const provider. So the provider to our connection is equal to the new WebRTC provider. Then the name of our room. So I'm just going to say test dash room. And then you give it the document. So the doc that we just created. I'm going to discuss more about naming rooms at the end of the video. If you're curious about doing something like, you know, room one, room two, things like that. So I'm gonna talk about that more at the end of the video. Then we can get the const type out of our Y document. So we can go into the document and do a dot get text. And this is going to return us a Y dot text. And so we can actually define the name of the text that we're going to get. So for example, Monaco. And this Monaco string, this can be named anything. I'm just saying it's the value of what our Monaco is showing. Imagine it like this. We have a document like this. And within the document, we have a Monaco key and then this shows what our ide is showing so when you're on the actual web page and so now we can do the binding where we can say const binding is equal to a new monaco binding this one's admittedly a little tricky because it's relying on a bunch of pre-written code for us firstly we're going to put in the type parameter this is going to show the text that we want monaco to be binded to so what text value do we want to show well we want to show this monaco get text right here because this text right here is what's being shared among all the different clients this is more monaco specific but we can take that current editor ref dot current and then we need to do the get model this is a monaco specific thing in models but it pretty much allows it to see the changes that are happening within monaco and then again some syntax that's specific to how yjs wants us to set this up is we can say new set and then pass it in an array the only thing we need in this array is the current reference to the editor so editor ref dot current so so far everything is good except this monaco binding isn't aware of what our web rtc provider is and so we can pass in the provider dot awareness this allows the monaco binding to connect everything to this web rtc provider here so if a bunch of people make monaco bindings and they're all connected to the test room for example it's through this provider awareness that it knows all the different changes you guys can also just like console dot log provider dot awareness if you guys want to see the type of information that the monaco binding gets access to Let's go into our console and run npm run dev again here. And let's go over to our local hosts. And so now we can see that if we type anything in here, it's going to be shared among all of our different clients, which is pretty wild. And if you guys are confused about how this is working at all, there are some things that have been abstracted for us, but we can still get a general understanding. Everyone is connected through WebRTC, which is looking for a certain room name. For example, I said test dash room through WebRTC, everyone's getting access to that y dot doc inside of that document there is a monaco property which is keeping track of everything in here <laughs> kind of like this but imagine we didn't have this part in that right <laughs> and then that monaco binding is what changes the value of the y dot doc and so although it's relatively simple that's kind of how you should understand the system and so this is also why i will talk about how these rooms work is let's say we wanted to have a bunch of different rooms. So I want to have like room one and room two. Room one is going to have its own events that are being sent out only to people listening to room one. Room two is also going to have its own events only to people that are listening to room two. And so this code right here where we have this cons provider, this WebRTC provider, pointing to a certain string is incredibly important as this provider right here is what allows us to listen to changes in the first place. And if you're interested in a more advanced project with this content, 
please let me know in the comments and I will definitely make something. But you can even do something like check if user is authenticated and then give access to the web RTC provider. In simpler terms, you only get into room two if you're a member. Something along those lines, right? And the code could literally be as simple as if user is in room, like they have access to a room or whatever you guys want to do, then allow the user to listen to the web RTC. And so I'm just going into this so kind of in depth because I'm allowing you guys to understand what is actually happening behind the scenes. So you guys can go out and create your more complicated applications with this web RTC. All right, guys, hopefully this video was a great introduction to web RTC and building your first kind of peer to peer network and creating something that's relatively useful. Thanks so much for watching.